Hey friends, welcome back to the show. If you are here today and you haven't been here before, I'm Nicole Palmer, strategist, brand coach, and writer behind Nicole Williams Collective, a strategic consultancy and lifestyle site for career and business-minded women ready to unleash the power of their voice, vision, and talent, and confidence so that they can leave their mark on the world. When I was growing up, of course, as a woman of color, I grew up with society consistently sending me these messages that my natural hair was not the standard of beauty, basically. And because of that, pretty early, I got my hair straightened. And it took me a very, very long time to learn how to love my hair. And this now is something that I've been trying to instill in my, my daughter, especially my younger one, to embrace your locks um, as a reminder of who you are. And of course, as a unique form of self-expression and a symbol and beauty of diversity. And as a Black woman or as Black woman, while our hair is not everything, it is, of course, a big, big part of who we are. And so, of course, a lot of times the problem that we have is that we can't find inclusive beauty products, inclusive services, and inclusive tools to help us to properly style our hair so that it can, you know, flourish in all its glory. And so today, my guest is going to um, join me in talking about natural hair, entrepreneurship, of course, hair discrimination, and creating more inclusive accessories for natural hair. So to help me with that, I have a fellow Georgian in the house who has gone from graphic designer to helping to create beautiful hairstyles without the headache. And so um, welcome to the show, I'm Sita. Sita Lash, of course, if you take a look at her CV, it's hard not to be impressed by what this woman, this ambitious, intelligent, and creative woman have accomplished. And of course, with this month being uh, Women's History Month, it goes to say she's following in the footsteps of like Ma Madam C.J. Walker, Annie Malone, and other women who have laid the path for us. And so, of course, I want to welcome Sita Lash to the show. Hey, welcome, Sita. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. All of what you were saying, I was like, <laughs> oh, you awesome. got it. You got it. <laughs> Definitely. And of course, I'm loving the hair. I see we have similar colors. Yes. So, yes. But I had some, <laughs> yeah. I had some bright red in before I put this one in and I couldn't find this in bright red. So I was like, oh, I'll settle for this one. But I'm feeling red lately. Right. Right. I'm feeling it too. Yeah. Okay, so um, start out by telling us about yourself and what you do. Okay, so I am the founder and inventor of the Puff Cup. So this is the only hair clamp specifically designed for those with thick, curly, textured hair that does not cause headache and does not cause hair damage. So no headache, no headache, no headache, no hair damage, no drama. And... I think as, like you said, as women of color and actually women not of color too, right. that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, you know, conversation. Right. Um, those of us who have texture, uh, society has basically said that you're not, you're not important. So what's coming out of your head, you need to change it and right. you need to straighten it in order to feel beautiful, look beautiful. Not only that, you need to straighten it in order to be able to use any type of tool that was exist that exists in the market. Well, when I stopped chemically straightening my hair back in whew, 20, 2006, um, and I stopped straightening my, I stopped getting a relaxer, not because I was trying to discover my inner self or you know, having a moment of clarity or anything, literally I couldn't get in the chair and right. I went longer between touch-ups and all the dandruff and dermatitis that I have been suffering with since I was a kid, because I've been getting my hair relaxed since I was 10, all of it disappeared, just went away. Right. And I was like, my body was, did a big exhale. And I was like, oh, I'm not willing to go back. I'm not going to go back to being, you know, kind of like entrapped by the use of the chemicals, 
uh, the the always having my skin and the scalp flaking and and actually and being trapped by the the, the salon chair. So the right. freedom was <laughs> the freedom was was you know something I hadn't experienced in so long right. that I was like this is too good to go back. But what happened is I've really found out that I could not style my hair like I wanted to because everyone if you've transitioned from relaxed to natural right you there's a period where you got to figure out if you even like the way you look tell me about it you're (laughs) able to digest the way you look what the way you look if you're able to have a relationship with this hair that you've never seen come out of your scalp um like I said I hadn't seen my natural hair since I was 10 even prior to that because I always had a hot I always had a hot combed or braided you know so it was like I don't know what to do with this and I got to still go to work every day and like you said your hair is not everything but it's a huge part of your self-acceptance your esteem your personality you know most definitely our hair is like our canvas you know what I mean is 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 a a crucial part of our canvas so I was like oh snap (laughs) (laughs) you know what that reminds me of I when I moved to Georgia four years ago from New York and when I came I had a full head of completely new growth um new new, like completely no chemicals nothing and I got here in the heat and I did not know what to do my hair was not responding the way it did when I was in New York so I went to one of those salons and let me tell you my hair after a while it was just breaking I thought there was something wrong with me and I had to call my doctor I even got to the point where I was like can we do a whole full blood workup right right. something is happening right was coming out and but it was the damage that it did to my hair and I watched my hair just got start just going shorter and shorter after I had that full head of healthy hair. And when when I got ready to do my hair this time, I looked at it and I was like, oh wow, I can't wait. It's just gorgeous. It's pretty, it's the healthiest it has been in a yes. long time. So I completely yes. understand. Yes. Cause see, I'm from I'm from the Chicago area. When I and I had transitioned before that, but I was one of those naturals because of the cold. I got my hair still straightened during the winter months, which with global warming, you and winter and you and winter and fall and, and the right. rainy season way longer than you are through summer. Right. So I was getting I was getting my hair straightened, even though I wasn't chemically straightened it, straightening it. But when I got down here, I was like, okay, the humidity is different. The I mean, every and you don't think that, I mean, that's just how wonderful God is that right that you like your hair can be like the the uh like the thermometer or the barometer or whatever (laughs) but yeah it's and 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 that's a real thing that's a real thing that your your body and your your hair and your nail everything else kind of it will adapt to wherever your your atmosphere is but that's a whole nother thing but yeah definitely and so, you know, talk a bit more about the um, Cuff Puff itself, the brand. And I know you are building the brand with your husband. Talk a little bit about entrepreneurship with your partner. So Puff Cuff, I established the company in 2013. We started retailing in 2014 on uh-huh. Amazon. And I think we, we moved to Georgia around the 2014, 2015 mark. Right. My husband at that time worked for Bank of America. And that was the reason why we ended up in Atlanta. It was either going to be Atlanta or Charlotte because he had that good job, you know, right. like benefits and all of right. that. And you're thinking, this is this is stability. So while I'm doing the entrepreneur thing, he will do the, you know, the 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 stable professional corporate, blah, blah, blah. Right. Little did we know that this is, a, this is, I think, we'll call this a PSA for all. I say black male professionals, after you get so far in corporate, you have a target on your back. Right. You are, you start to become a liability to them. Right. And um, they laid him off after he had gotten to the point where he had 
he was managing like $10 million worth of accounts within the, the tell, not the finance part, but the tell IT and telephony part. God has got <clears throat> everything where it would need to be. And they're like, okay, we see you've managed your accounts well, and you've got them set up to where they all need to be. So we don't need you anymore wow. on Father's Day weekend. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> so with that, our whole mind was, our minds were blown because that's what we've been groomed and he had been groomed. And as a black male with a family, this is what you're, this is, you've taken a lot of my identity away. So what do I do with this? Not mm -hmm. knowing that Puff Cuff was the savior because what I was making on Amazon alone was more than what his salary was, but we couldn't see it for for what it was at the time. What it was, right? Because you've been groomed to, you go to college, you get that good job, you go up the ladder until you die at your desk with maybe right. you know, you the benefits. Or, uh, with, right, 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 <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, and then to be honest, he had always been, always wanted to work with Puff Cuff, but being again, a black man with a fa family and responsibilities and everything, God was like, you ain't never gonna leave that job unless I kick you out of that job. So- right. That's what happened. And in 2017, he came on board as my co-CEO and have, we've been rocking it ever since then. And it, it's, it's, I would say it's, it's never been tough for us because we are very much a good yin and yang. Right. And I think he's the only one who really can put up with me the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so that, that part has been, it's been amazing. And We've diversified the business in, in different ways and he's over certain parts and I'm over certain parts. And we just, you know, we just know where our lane is. He tries to cross over, cross over into mine way too much as far as I'm concerned, but right. And then I know it's from a good place, but this, this, this couples thing, this, and people are like, you're a black power couple. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Cause this stuff is hard. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. And easy. that's the thing. People entrepreneurship is hard and so when we see people having successes it's funny yesterday I responded to this comment on LinkedIn and you know um, someone basically highlighted they were talking about women leaving their jobs and they highlighted a um, young African-American woman who have left her job she was working in a mostly um, male dominated and she decided she was not going to take the misery of where she was and she started her own firm doing awesome and the responses that I saw on the post, I was like, okay, I think a lot of people are missing this. It's not that they're saying entrepreneurship is easy. Everybody knows it's hard, but when you have success, you got to celebrate that. It's hard yeah. for us to celebrate. It is hard. I mean, and I think too, it, as women, we've always been taught to keep our place. Right. Don't, you don't, um, don't you don't be too talking. proud. Mm-hmm. You know, humility. God loves a humble, a humble soul, you know, but it's not about not being humble. It's about celebrating what you've done. And it, right. I've got a lot of issues with that. A lot of self issues to say, well, damn, yeah, I did do this. You know, right. people do, you know, I need to, I need to pat myself on the back and not wait necessarily for somebody else to pat me, myself exactly. pat me on the back. Yeah. Right. This is, this, this road is not for the weak. It is not for the week. Oh, and, sure. but Don't then sometimes I'm like, I need a hug. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, people don't realize it's hard, man. It's it, hard. You, know, you don't get this work done. Ain't no paycheck calling your name at the end of the week or anything nope. like that. Yeah. Nope. And a lot of times people don't see the sacrifices that you make to really get the success you have. They think it's this overnight success. They don't know how many things nights you want to sleepless. Sleepless nights. Right. How many eat? days you didn't eat until you figured out your stomach was hurting so bad because you right? didn't eat all day. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. So I congratulate you guys that you're to the point where, you know, your business is now employed both of you. So that, that, that's an awesome accomplishment. No, initially, I think when I had um, browsed your website, initially, I thought maybe you had a background in hair. <laughs> and I realized she's a graphic designer. So uh, tell us a bit about that. You have a degree in um, visual communications and a background in graphic design. Um, how did or how does that play a role in the success of Puff Cuff? So it plays a very big role because I was able to visualize the brand and I'm able, I, the, the brand is me. That is, that was my look. 
that right. is everything that you see when it comes to Prof Cuff. It's been enhanced by other people giving a um, an outside view, but the crux and the core and the foundation of the brand right. is definitely a representation of me. Now, I can say I've always loved hair, but I come from the generation of when if you wanted to do hair in high school, like in high school, if you went, only reason why you did hair is because you got pregnant. Right. You didn't go to college or something like that. Right. So, and my, my folks was like, ah, uh-uh. but I've always, always, always loved the fact of the versatility and how someone can be transformed literally by just having their hair done. I had twin uncles that were barbers in the uh, uh, south side of Chicago, and I used to go and sit in the barber shop and look, I mean, watch them all day, cut hair and have just men be totally transformed into a, like their alter ego just by having right. their hair done. Right. And how it's more than just the outside appearance. It does something internally. It com- yes, it builds yes. that confidence. With, right. especially- it does something internally. Right. So I would say if I, maybe in another life, I would have been a beautician or something or a stylist, right. but at the same time, God knew what he was doing. <laughs> right. So I, I manifested my creativity in graphic design. And that's where that has helped me so much for the business because, you know, everything is visual. Point. Right. Whatever you're doing, it's all visual. And if you don't have that strong um, visual brand identity that resonates, yeah, you can have a good brand, I mean, a strong brand identity, but if it doesn't resonate with the customer, right? it's, it's, it's not worth anything. So I was able to, my background, my graphic design background was able to, um, I think I was ahead of the game in terms of how to create a brand, market a brand, and um, not necessarily market, but visually market a brand that would be appealing to the The customer. Okay. Well, we know, of course, the start of the brand because of your hair journey, but as a Black woman in business and everything, how, how does that play a role in you building and developing your business? You, we have to deal with these unique challenges as uh, as women in business. And of course, if you're Black, that's another thing. How, how does that affect your journey as an entrepreneur? I don't have a good poker face. So when you see me rolling, <laughs> <laughs> that's what means, oh yeah, I can, we could talk about that this episode and next episode. <laughs> but um, so being, okay, I think it's a two-part question. Right. Being a Black woman in small business and entrepreneurship, going eyes wide open, we are so far behind. We're looked at as last in line, even though we're holding the weight and doing the most. There were times in this journey where, I mean, there's been plenty of times where I could not get a loan or I had to have my husband co-sign for me in order for to get the loan, even though he wasn't the one running the business. Right. There were years where we were totally in the black every single year, year over year, but uh, the banking institutions and uh, organizations were not giving me a loan. And I was like, what is, what are we doing wrong? But it took a class that I went to. Um, it was an entrepreneurship uh, cohort at Cornell for women in business. And they literally were like, yeah, you're not getting a loan because you're female and because you're black. Just accept it, eyes wide open. This is why it's happening. And this is because of the society that in the world that we live in. Right. Not to say you, you not to say um, you can't do this. Right. But let's just be real. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to jump higher, run faster, look prettier, uh, play the game, you know, but do it better. Yep. Yeah, yeah do, do it, do it better, better than everybody else because of who you because you have estrogen and melanin (laughs) period that's that's it now in terms of the business side of it um and the brand side when I started this company I literally thought it was just going to be for people for black women I really thought okay I'm a black woman I know I have this need 
there's so many more of us that are making the same changes. Right. They will be my main customer. And they, they, they are majority, my, my main customer, my customer base, I do have a very diverse customer base, but the black women hold the major percentage. Right. I did not realize that this was a curly hair brand in the beginning. I thought it was a black brand. Right. And going into retail and everything else, when I realized this was a curly hair brand, I have I had to ride that thin line of do I present myself as a black brand or am I a black com- a, a black owned company that's a curly hair brand? Right. You can get I get backlash on both sides because if I don't present myself as a black brand in some instances and occasion, then I get called a sellout and everything else. Right. But also my thing is I'm a brand that likes green <laughs> and green is spent by everyone. Every, curly hair comes in every single freaking ethnicity in the world. Right. So it's a constant, like, I won't say battle, but it's a little bit of a struggle because if, if retailers put me in the ethnic aisle, guess who ain't coming down that aisle to shop my brand. Right. Yep. If I, you know, when I started this business, my, my, one of my um, um, entrepreneurial sheroes was Sarah Blakely of, of Spanx. Not, I should say was, she kind of still is, but she has her little, her little drawing of herself is plastered everywhere across her brand. Right. Right. Does that mean Spanx can only be worn by blonde white women? Definitely not. We got a lot of blacks that wear Spanx. Right. Beyonce is the one who put her on. But if I, when I had my avatar on the front of my packaging, which I was inspired by Sarah. Right. Then all of a sudden that, that, that meant that my product was only for black women. Right. <laughs> and it was like, no, Double and standard. it was one of those things where it was hard to swallow. But again, we are all, we're looked at at a different standard, you know? So it's like, okay, maybe when I get that, you know, when I become like Carol's daughter and they, they buy me for whatever, but you know, it's, it's that constant struggle of look, don't, don't pigeonhole me as a black brand for only black people. Cause everybody now, ever since, you know, we were watching ourselves getting killed on TV and people recording it, Black, oh, now we need to help. We realize how disadvantaged Black businesses and Black people have been when it comes to, you know, having the wealth and the capital to move businesses forward. Right. When that happened, then it was like, we're all going to create our little, you know, we're going to do a little space, right, for this is where we're going to I say fill our guilt and, and champion <laughs> for black people, which I appreciate that. But at the same time, we have to realize the world that we live in. Right. If you position me as a black brand, the consumer feels like, well, that's only for black people. Right. Which is not true. Was the street light only for black people? <laughs> Even though it was invented by a black person. You know? <laughs> Everybody needs a streetlight. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Right. So it's it's one of those things where I'm like, I yeah, I I I I I have given myself the title. Yes, Puff Cuff was invented by a black girl. Right. It is for it is a curly hair brand. It don't matter if you are a dog, <laughs> you could be a poodle, you could be a blonde, you could be a redhead, you could be a a. a, a we have you know customers in Malaysia and Kuwait right everywhere and um and 65 percent of the world's population has curly hair yeah 65 percent of the world's population is not black right and I see that you guys um of course have have also a male line for for the guys you know you guys have um offer hair products tools and of course PC men Right, right. Because men have way better curls than we do because they haven't destroyed it over the years. Right. (laughs) (laughs) 
So, and it, what was happening is um, what they would do is they would discover their partners, daughters or whatever puff cuff, and they would end up stealing it. And, and they would, they, or some people, some of them would be like, you know, feeling some that their masculinity was in jeopardy if they bought it from the puff cuff website. So it's right. like, okay, we can meet you where you're at. Cause we see you. You create and, a whole side for that. Right, we see you and like puff cuff works with locks and you know, there's more men of, you know, there's more boomers now growing out right. their hair. I mean, especially if they got, if they still have it. <laughs> so, and then there's so many moms now that, you know, are not doing that whole barbershop thing with their little boys and they're letting their hair grow out. And point blank, you, sometime you're going to want to put it up and the rubber band and elastic bands and headband, anything with elastic was never meant for us. The hair, yeah. Because it's yeah. meant to bind hair. It's meant to bind thin fibers and give them bulk. Well, right. we already have bulk. We don't need anything to bind it or cinch right. it. We just need something to hold it, hold it in place, which is basically what the puff cuff does. Yeah, definitely. My nephew has long hair and they haven't cut it. And so it looks gorgeous when it's out. It's just this full head of hair, but it's beautiful. It's awesome. beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk a bit. So you are the first African-American woman to hold three U.S. patents, of course, when it comes to hair accessories and I think they said you have like four more pendants. Talk a, talk a bit about that. So I just got my fourth. So I have three, I have four patents now, four okay. U.S. patents for a natural hair tool. Um, three of the patents are on the puff cuff and one is for a edge brush that um, has a silicone, the brush itself. It's a three-in-one tool. So it parts it does your edges and then the bristle, instead of having bore bristles, the bristles uh -huh. are silicone. That way it's gentler on the edges. And then you can also rinse it and clean it out. Cause you know, some of these brushes going on. It destroys it. Yep. Yep. It's, it's nasty. <laughs> so, right. so um, yes, I just got that last patent for the edge master is what it's called. But um, the patent process has been, I would say for me, it's been a lot easier than most, but right. I was again, fortunate enough to have um, the right people in my, in my um, village to be able to help me through that process. And I didn't get, I didn't get burned. It didn't cost me right. thousands upon thousands of dollars to get my patents, but it has cost me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to protect my patents. Right. <laughs> which no one tells you that there's no, there's, you know, you can get patent protection, but there are no patent police. Right. So whatever you, it, it almost gets to the point where it's for small businesses. Yes, it is. It gives me a lot of street cred to say that I have patents, but do it doesn't do great for my bottom line because it costs too much to protect them. To protect what I've them. got to do is build up the brand and have the brand confidence so that the consumer is like, oh, that's not a puff cuff. I right, know it's like you. Nike, you know, right. People are, yeah. So you can spot those fakers. Right, right, fakers. right. And yeah. most of the people that, you know, we've been, we've been, we've been knocked off twice, one by a huge company, Cantu, which is not a black owned brand at all. The headquarters is they're owned by a hedge fund or something in Luxembourg, Luxembourg. They don't even, they ain't even in the United States, but we just eating it up like crazy. But anyway, they uh, produced a clip very similar to mine after mine came out, but it was one of my, one of my fans that was like, do you know that Cantu is doing this? Almost like Cantu went through my whole website and said, we're going to do that, 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 and that. But and see that that speaks a lot to brand loyalty and building up your brand, um, your brand equity and stuff. Because, like you said, it was one of your, you know, customers or one of your fans was able to spot it and say, "Hey, you know, mm -hmm. this is happening." So, so that's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. That, that speaks a lot about what you guys are doing over there. Okay, so I know your your grandmother played a very key and vital role in your life that helped you along your journey. Share with us one vital um, lesson or takeaway that um, your grandmother taught you that has lived with you to today. Keep God first. Keep God first. And he will, even when you can't see 
the next step or the next moment, he's already got it planned for you. So it's about, that's why I'm having, that's why I had to put my uh, girl, my mustard seed back on because (laughs) (laughs) it's been, it's been rough and it's, you know, just, just having that faith, but we're all human. Right. And it's, it's very easy to doubt and be, you know, shuddered and shaken. But if you do right by him, he's going to, you, he's got, he's got you. So right. That was one of the things that was her thing is when she was about to pass at 99 years old, she was like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to claim my mansion. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do that the Lord has charged me with while I was here. So I'm ready. And I had the idea of Puff Cuff and I was like, you know what? I want to, when I'm, if I am ever so blessed to be at that same point in my life, I don't want to be like, well, shoot, I wish I should have done something with that. So right that was the thing what one tip would you give to um someone who basically looking to i are interested in uh entrepreneurship or interested in um the beauty industry you have to go in with eyes wide open um social media and media in general traditional media will now sell you the idea that everything is happens overnight right and it's you know an add water and stir type of situation right um don't believe the hype. Don't, don't believe the hype. This is very, that's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Even these brands that, you know, you see them on, you know, the cover of Ebony or uh, cover of Essence or on LinkedIn or whatever. Right. There's a lot of freaking work and money that goes into this. And, and tears. <laughs> and tears, sweat, you know, a couple children being like, you know, right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's, it's not the glamorous, it's not glamorous all the time. It can be, but it's not glamorous all the time. And, um, like right now we're, we, the, we are a million dollars down because of the Facebook and Apple iOS update, because now I can't reach my customers the way I used to. Um, so, and again, most black companies and brands we're not coming into this game with a a, 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 um whether they cockles or whatever of 200 million just sitting there for operating capital that that's not where we come from if you come from a race of people that have been locked out of owning anything or if we do own something it's just our house Right. No, and we can't, that, like, trying to take right. <laughs> and then, you know, you try to go get a $500,000 loan and they're like, well, where's your collateral? Well, do you know, you locked all my people out of ever owning anything. And if we did own something, then you did redlining or, you know, that's a whole, I could go there, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, and you don't know what you don't know, because a lot of times we do not have people like you and I could look to somebody who's done what you're doing right. before you and right. did it successfully. Right. Definitely. So it's, it's hard. It's very hard, but that's why I so now try to be the voice of black people, people of color. We have so much power that we do not take advantage of. We have so much power. We give it away constantly. And, but when you learn different, you do different. Right. So for me and you, that's why you, that's why you're talking. That's why we're talking now right. for someone else to be like, you know what? That'll help me decide which way I need to go. Right. And that will give me, I can see that she's done it. There's no reason why I can't do it I too. The girl, I will be your champion. I will be your cheerleader because right. there's not many of us out there. And, and that's so true. And this is why I tell you, especially, you know, when it comes to women and even black women, we, we don't own our narratives. We don't own our stories. We don't know our worth. And so we consistently give it away. And, you know, I, I've been there um, and stuff these days. Let me tell you, I'm not afraid to talk about money. I, I get on the phone with clients and it's like, OK, time to send the invoices. I, I'm not afraid to do that. But we, we're afraid to talk about money. We're afraid to to, we're to afraid ask. To ask. Work. Yep. We're afraid to ask. And I'm like... I, you don't even have the no yet. And you're afraid to ask. <laughs> You'll never even find out if you don't ask. Exactly. Exactly. And so, of course, you know, we got to keep doing what we're doing because we, like you said, we have so much power. 
we have so much talent and if only we just bet on ourselves and just take that risk because I mean what what do we have to lose nothing right uh, right <laughs> according to the world we're already at the bottom so <laughs> Nothing exactly. To lose. There's nothing to lose. There's only gain. There's only gain. So as we round this out, you know, when you're when you're not um busy um you know being the entrepreneur, I know you you know have um you're a wife and 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 mom, you know how do you unwind? How do you balance your responsibilities and the and your passions? Because a lot of times we get in the entrepreneurship and we get so tunnel vision that we forget all the things that's important to us. And if it's anything COVID has taught us, is to be present and to love on the people that we have um, and take care of ourselves. So how do you balance that all? I would say balance is not a word that I know. Right. I'm always trying to just do better, but right. I can't say that there's a balance. Right. Um, all of my family works with me. I have two 20 year old, well, about to be 20 year old sons um, that they also work here too. I try to be purposeful in family time. We're okay. We're going to stop and we're going to do this. But then I also am very, 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 very transparent. The puff cuff is allows us to eat. So, right. <laughs> and, you know, I have employees. This is help. This is a lot. So there's some things that may be sacrificed now. Right. That will pay. We'll be able to play hard later, love hard later. Right. Um, in terms of myself, I'm doing better. Right. Because, you know, when you when you are a strong woman, it's hard to take that S off your chest and be <laughs> right. like, you know what, I'm vulnerable. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to stop. Like right now, I believe I, I, I believe I have a stomach ulcer because of my right. anxiety and my stress and everything else. But what would be the irresponsible thing is not to go see about it. Right. Yeah, the 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 Googler and can tell you all of the symptoms that you have, but it ain't gonna cure you. You need to go if see. You don't somebody. go get it taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at some point we gotta slow down and stop right. and just make sure that we are taking care of ourselves because we're yes. the fuel and we're the engine that keeps everything else going. And if you're not refreshing Listening. and revitalizing, yeah, right. then then it all crashes. Right, right. So my whole thing is to do better. Listen and do better. So a couple of quick flash questions. Favorite compliment? Favorite compliment? Uh huh. You have great lips. Guilty pleasure. Oh my God! There's a Swiss chocolate that I got. Swiss cho- salted. Uh, it's a salted dark chocolate. Oh, I keep it by my bed. I even travel with it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Red lipstick or pink? Pink. Power outfit. Power outfit. Uh huh. Ooh. The outfit that I wore for my 50th birthday, it was a, because uh, I, I don't do fitted. I have big boobs and a right. small back, but I did this fitted cream outfit that had one arm out, girl. You can tell me nothing. <laughs> you can tell me nothing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So tell us what's next with Puff Cuff and, um, you know, what do you have coming up and if you have any offers for um, our guest listeners so that they can come on over and support you. And where they can find you. Okay, so you can find the Puff Cuff at thepuffcuff.com. We are also sold on Target.com and Amazon.com. But you know, I make more money if you come to my website than theirs. We actually are launching a 40% off spring cleaning sale, 40% off our top sellers. And you can find Puff Cuff on every single social channel at thepuffcuff.com, uh, at thepuffcuff. Oh, and coming up, we're, we're, Hoping to release two new products later this year. So okay. keep, keep tuned for that and, you know, stay tuned for that. And then just, um, just keeping us in our prayers. We're seeking some uh, equity investment, which is the first, first time for us okay. to do that. Um, I still own a hundred percent of the company. So I have some F- equity to, to give up, but right. I've learned the lessons. One big lesson that debt financing will only take you so far eventually to get your get businesses at the valuation that you want to either sell, exit, or whatever, equity financing is going to have to be part of your plan. Of your I did plan. not know that from the beginning. Well, thanks for sharing that with us and for those who are listening. Okay, awesome. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Sita. Um, 
Thanks for pulling up your seat, sitting down, sharing your story in hopes of helping our audience or someone out there to cultivate their confidence, um, overcome fear, and of course, define success on their own terms. And to everyone's listening or watching, I'm going to put the um, code in the show notes and of course, links to um, where you guys can shop. Can I demo it for you real quick? Sure, definitely. Go ahead. So this is our travel case. So does, when you purchase your orders for the puff cup, does they all, do they all come with a case or do you have to purchase the case? The case is separate, but we do have some bundles that include the case. Okay. But the way the puff cuff works, I'm going to leave my top knot in. I've got one of the tiniest puff cuffs in here right now, but the way it works, you gather your hair wherever you want your puff to be. Right. You do not use the puff cuff to gather your hair like you would a banana clip. You gather your hair first. You have the puff cuff here. Right. You open it wide. Overlap the hooks and you let your hair go. And that's it. I love it. I love it. And you said the front is a tiny puff cuff right now? Yeah. So we have puff cuff comes in five sizes. So we have the original, which is a five inch. Oh, wow. Well. Then we have the junior, which is the one I just used. It's like three inches. Uh-huh. And we have the mini. And then we have micro. Okay. And then we have the teeny. So the thought behind a curly hair comes in all densities and thickness. Right. Like my hair may look like it's thick. But when you come, it just goes down into this small, yeah. My hair, right, right. I don't, I have a lot of volume, but I don't have a lot of thickness. Yeah. So <clears throat> people with different either densities or thickness will use different sizes. Or if you want different styling options, like if you right. want two, it's about how much, two puffs, it's about really how much hair you're gathering. And when the size of your fist of when you gather that hair, that's the size puff cuff you want to kind of start with. But either way it okay. goes, you gather the hair first, then clip it around, and then you let the hair go. And then the density and the curls act outward on the cuff to keep it right. close. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. definitely cool. My kids, they have, um, you know, their, their hair that fluffs out. But when you do this, it's just right. I have it's not. thicker hair. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes, yeah. So yeah, we're definitely going to be getting some of those. Um, I, and it's funny because I was thinking, I was like, what accessories can I get for her here that will help with the styling for those days mm -hmm. when it's, she's not wearing braids and stuff and give her something that makes her look a little bit more, you know, um, together. Right. right. And then make her mm -hmm. hair look good. Cause she likes it out. The only thing is sometimes it's like, you got all the scringies don't work and it's like, okay, it's not always the best. And like you said, it, it puts stress and damage. And I'm actually going to be looking up that brush for the, for the edges. So, you know, thanks yes. for, for that one. <laughs> it was such a pleasure. Thanks for demoing that for us. And um, we will definitely be supporting. And don't forget. Spring cleaning sale, 40% off our top sellers from awesome. now until March 20th. So I hope everyone got value out of this. I hope everyone learned something from the show. And thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.